It's the last day of the year and we're going diving. Let's go. Well, here we have the last one coming to join the, the A and the B team. The A team extreme. The A team extreme, yeah? That's it. The leader that was told before. <laughs> the leader? It's going to be a yeah. I'm not going to say who said that. Oh, Jesus. I was, like we're going to have there. Captain... There's another Dan. comment made after that, but I won't repeat that either. We're going to have Captain <laughs> Dan at the wheel. Oh. Right, fire it up. No, Let's get the show on the go. Yeah. The B team is going to show the A team how it's done. Yeah. Get the pointy end. Let the pointy end go. Let the blunt end go. Foul, you're on blunt end duty. We've got a few cages on the pontoon to fill up. Plus there's already a few down there. Oh, and a flask. Full ahead all together, okay? There you are, there's JP assembling his gear. Awful lot of shells on the boat. There's young Nipper there. Daisy Marwick. Well, the good ship Margaret Kay, tied to the pontoon, waiting for next year. Yeah, this is a well-dressed diver here, getting ready to go in. So he's just rigging up his bobble line. Now he's got his red hat on. That's the main thing. Now why do you think he's got a red hat on? So you can see. Uh, because when they uh, do a hard hat diving, red wool was very uh, abundant. They had to wear a hat because the cold air was fed down from above onto their head. Load of rubbish. Jacques Cousteau wore one. Yeah. Or was it the French? Well, Jacques Cousteau always wore a red woolly hat. Yeah, I thought that. And do you know why Jacques Cousteau always wore a red woolly hat? Because diving was dangerous and they used to use convicts to go down and then the prison used to wear a red hat. Correct. Yeah. That was a sign that you were a convict. But you were allowed out to train as a diver and be a diver because, funny enough, it was a bit of a dodgy uh, in the 1800s and 1900s. It was a bit of a dodgy thing to be a diver. Yeah. So you were expendable, but you also got out of prison. A bit like being a witch then, burnt at the stake. Drown, drown if you're not a witch and get burnt at the stake if you can swim. You were a font of knowledge, Sally. You know, it, it's these things, you know, that we sort of, you know, there's Lee there with his knee pads for his praying on the bottom that he's going to find a Dover soul that Jeffrey hasn't had. That oh. was on the cars today. Could be nice. Miracles don't happen that often. No. <laughs> but he'll be looking. Always looking. Oh. Chuck my weight to I've just had a thought as well. I'll have to rig up another bubble line. Right, go on, let's see some action. The viewers are desperate to see JP catch more than a dozen. Yeah. And the rest of us. I reckon I'll do a dozen today. Make a dozen, JP. Yeah. <laughs> One dozen will be good enough. Straight into dive number one. Here you can see on my dive computer I dropped down to 14.1 metres. It's not my maximum depth on the dive, but what it does show is the bottom contours which I followed. Mm -hmm. 
Richard suggested actually coming into the shallows for these dives. So, because he dives every day, he knows the locations to go and try. He knows where he's fished in previous days or previous weeks. So, he knew it was going to be dark and he knew the viz weren't going to be that good. Also, he's got an ex excellent knowledge of the tides, so he told us to come into this location. The scallops in this location aren't actually that big. I don't know if it's to do with the depth of water and they don't grow as fast or there's lack of movement of water but it's still good fun and they're still well over the legal limit. Also as it's shallow you probably get a lot more divers coming over this bit of sand. Although it looks really cold, it's not that bad at the moment. You can see here, this is the blue line I'm toggling on and off. I started off at 14 degrees, and as I came down to this depth, it's now dropped to 12. So it's not actually that bad. That is the normal for December. And you see in February and March, it gets a lot colder, being down to nine degrees. I've actually seen it a lot lower than that. I've had a dive one through it, it's five degrees. As you come up to little reefs like this, you've got two options really. Go over or try and go around. But when the tide's screaming, sometimes it's just easier to go over the top. Here you can see on my profile, I've just climbed over a peak. Now I'm going to drop back down the other side, back onto the sand. As we come past these reefs, we look in every little hole. Here you can see a shanker, it's hiding away. In this area I notice there's loads of large dug holes in the floor. Not quite sure what made them, but here's one, here's another. They're about a foot deep. There's some more. At the moment I'm in a sandy gully between two reefs. You don't really find many scallops here because the divers tend to be washed down these gullies when they do the drift dive. Just looking back up, you can see all the seaweed like hair flapping in the tide. Get some fishing gear. Let's make sure there's no hooks on it. I can't see anything, it's just cat got, so I'll leave it. Check out this phantom wrasse. He looks black, but he's not. It's just I haven't got no torches on. So he appears black, but he's probably just dark brown. Check out the tide. Now I've cleared the reef, which is a favourite excuse for having low numbers. You, you hear divers say, oh, well I was on the reef. I love using that excuse. The actual real reason is just I want to film everything. Some nice scallops behind this reef, uh, but they're all too small. So they're probably 10 mil under the legal limit, so there's no point even touching them. This one looks better. It's actually really nice to see the young ones as well. Thank you. 
I love popping up over the top of reefs. You always catch fish out, like this one. I think it was a red mullet, but I couldn't really tell. Starting to get the end of my bottom time now. This is a seabed, it's been scoured by the tide. Don't worry, it'll go back when the tide turns the other way. It's a cat shark, or most commonly known as a dogfish. It's a bottom feeder, you can tell that by the way it's squat to the seabed. It never rises up in the water column. It feeds on little invertebrates and stuff. But watch these things swim. These are very common around Guernsey and the fishermen hate it because if they've got a ground bait down these things will find it and snap it up before the decent fish like the turbots or the brew. I'm starting to come back up now up into shallower water where I'm diving, if you head west, you get shallower. I think it's about time I went up. Can't see many more scallops. The way we dive on Sylvia K is we tend to split our tanks in half. So from one 15 litre tank, you get two dives. About 120 bars, half a tank. So I've got more than half a tank, and I've been down for 24 minutes. Time I went up. There's two different ways really to bring your gear up. Some people leave the bag on the bottom and just tie the neck and follow a rope to the surface, or you can do it as I do it and reel it up with a reel. Personally, I prefer this way, but each to their own. Some people ask me why I use orange gloves. You'd rather have orange gloves on than blue gloves if you're on the surface and lost at sea and you have to wave to a passing boat. Here you can see my dive profile. I've come up and I've waited at five metres for three minutes. This is what they call a safety stop. It's always a good time to admire you, what you've caught, or the lack of what you've caught. I think this is pretty, pretty average for me, it's got to be 30, 40 in here. As you pop your head up, you have a little look around see if you can see the boat. Sometimes you can't even see the boat, but all you do is just wait until the boat comes to you. They know exactly where you are. Grading your scallop begins as soon as you get back onto the boat because if they're on the sides you want to chuck them back here where you found them. You just make sure there's an even stock over the whole seabed. Someone's lost the pot. It's good that Lee's cleaning up the seabed. Yeah. 
Wasn't all that plastic <laughs> polypropylene <laughs> rope down there? Yeah. So you gotta look at that. That's plastic, that. Eh? It's plastic, that. Right? What's that? That is. Got a bit of plastic on it. We've got a load of rope anyway. Richie could do it some more rope. <laughs> <laughs> get them sorted, get the smalls back in the water. Sorry Matt, dragging my buff right past you. They're not exactly big ones. See what I mean? Many decent ones in there. Uh, okay. Bigger than a fort. Well within. Yeah. Easy in. Easy in. Five forty one. How many Phil? Eighty-six. Eighty-six. How many Sal? Fifty-two, yeah. Hundred nineteen. Hundred and nineteen. The big catcher. Lee well, might be in second place. Is anyone surprised with that? I'm not. <laughs> not surprised that I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I'm having fun. Yeah, exactly. We've got to pay our way. Pay your way, you can use a boat for free. Got to catch some scallops. Is the captain, is he uh, beating the 119 or whatever it was? Yeah. That's a nice set of buffs he's got on there. That is a nice set of buffs. Yeah, he's new ones apparently. He likes them, doesn't he? I don't know, a bit That's bigger though. Paul M. Paul M. He would be here if he could. Oh, that means Richard's got a Dover. Oh, you yourself. No I bet you a crab pot and then lost it. Crab pot. Yeah. 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 I don't like doing that. I don't like it. Yeah, it's going to go back down. Is that 10 dozen? I reckon it is 10 dozen. Davis <laughs> almost have got out. Just going straight back in. Hey, mate, one of the subs wanted to know what we use for our wetsuits. Oh, yeah. That's the one. That's what we use on the, uh, well, that's what Phil uses, Jollop. That's for on the seals with the cough seals and the neck seals. Rather than using tail compelder. Good stuff.
Well, if Richard's going back in, so am I. Pretty close to Phil, yeah? I better check my rope. Yeah, it's right. Mine's over the side of him, so I can swim off. I won't get tangled. We basically drop down exactly the same place as we tied first time, maybe slightly shallower. All these are very small. These are probably the ones I left on the first dive. Here's another large hermit crab. Looks like he's having a fight with a smaller crab. Here's a scallop recessed down into the seabed. It's made a small divot. It's got his feelers out, his tentacles. Just grabbing food as it goes by. Close by, we have two hermit crabs having a fight with each other. It's pretty normal. As Phil swims ahead, I look at the holes that's left in the seabed where the scallop's been taken. Loads of these little snails, their little antennae is out, feeding, there's no doubt, for the waste the scallop had left.
Divers have definitely been passed here. Some hermit crabs trying to clean up the area. Wait patiently to see if it's going to swim. I don't think it is though. It looks like it's happy feeding. Okay, this is a clean fight. No pinching, no biting. Let's go. More hermit crabs fighting each other. Of course, the diver stood the bottle up. That won't stand up for long. When the tide starts pushing hard, probably knock it over. It's a spider crab trying to hide out the way. It could be soft. Take a look at that soulless face. So all together we had 766, which is 63 dozen. Not bad. Not bad going. Not bad for beginners. Not bad. It's about eager from Dive Guernsey. <laughs> There's a lot of cages to fill up. I think we got enough though. I think we got enough to fill them all up. Between Dan and Richard, they sort out the scallops into various sizes, keeping the larger ones in a separate bucket. You don't want to put too many in these cages as they can uh, suffocate each other, so you want a good flow of water around each one. I once asked Richard how long he can keep in these cages, he said probably indefinitely, but six months, you don't want to be doing it any longer than that, and the condition of them wouldn't improve if you keep them in the cages. Yeah, we're 